What's up, y'all? It's Griffin Lobster. Peace. Um, so I, I bet you're trying, you're like wondering why you're, you're seeing me and not Psychonauts right now. That's a good question. You always know how to ask the good questions. Um, so here's the deal. Uh, the level I'm currently doing right now um, is not working too well with Camtasia. They're not getting along, bumping heads. Uh, the dance party level, the levitation level, for some reason, they just it, Camtasia doesn't like it, and to, you know, to, well, I'm trying to have a party, you know, I'm trying to have a dance party here. Camtasia brings its you know old gate crashing buddy, slow down, and you know just gets up off my grill, you know, you know, eats all the dip. You know, spikes the punch. Just, I mean, it, it just makes it not not a you know, fun experience. And you know, uh, it's low class. Slow down is low class. So I was thinking, you know, what am I gonna do? I thought everybody else has, you know, their kind of side videos. You know, that they do kind of on the side. Uh, like, Texas Tyler has done a couple like tours of his room, or that he that one thing with the fisheye lens a little bit ago. Um, and he does Let's Tries. Everybody loves, does Let's Tries, except for me. I did that one Donkey Kong video, but that wasn't even Let's Try. That was just kind of filling you in while I was playing the game. Uh, yeah, and Durden does, like, he did a review of the demo for Nuts and Bolts. And he's done some Let's Tries. Uh, and, you know, Dark Minus Sith did his Ask Dark Minus Sith series. And, um, he's done all those YouTube poops. So I was like, eh, I gotta do something. So I came up with this idea, and I hope you guys like it. Tell me if you don't. Um, but I'm going to broadcast a list of my top 50 favorite games ever. Now, I know. It's tough. It was a hard list to make up. And originally I had like 75. And I had to cut it down. And I had like some games that would be considered like the best games ever. You know? But that just because a game is the best game ever doesn't necessarily mean it's one of my favorites. You know? I've seen Citizen Kane. Everyone says everyone says Citizen Kane is so amazing. It's always the top of all the best movie lists. But I wouldn't uh, I wouldn't call it one of my favorite movies. So maybe I'm just not artsy enough. Whatever. But the, here's the here. So the point is, these aren't going to be the top 50 greatest games of all time because that'd be boring. Then you just hear the same thing over and over again. You know, this this list for me is going to be my top 550 favorite games. Um. And some of you are kind of angry that there that your favorite game is doesn't make the list, or is low on the list. Keep in mind, about from like 50, 50 to like the 21 range, is can just be flipped around. That's just kind of gray area. The top 20 are the ones that I really, really put a lot of time into making sure that I had them in the correct order. So I'm gonna go start with my first five games today, and I'm gonna do videos uh, day by day, and I'll do like maybe five a video, and talk about each game. Because I can talk about these games for a long time, because I've played the, all these games on this list. I promise you, I'm not going to, you know, BS you into playing a game, into putting a game on the list I haven't played. Um, but, you know, these are the 50 best games I've played. So here we go. We're going to start with number 50. And again, feedback. Tell me if you like it. Okay, number 50. Legend of Zelda Link's Awakening. Now this game uh, came out... June 6th, 1993 for the Game Boy. And, um, it was the first, yeah, first, uh, handheld Zelda game. Um, it came out again in 1998, uh, on the Game Boy Color, because, you know, they were all hyped up. Oh, Color! Huh. You know, uh, I never owned an original Game Boy myself, but I did play the DX version, and I really enjoyed it. It's about, it's a little bit different than other Zelda games. It's not the whole, you know, Ganon princess, kind of normal, everyday stuff, you get in a raft crash, essentially, and you crash on this place called Koholint Island, I think, um, and you have to awaken this wind fish um, by finding all the musical instruments and playing a lullaby. It's a really cool game. It has a neat ending. I really, really recommend uh, checking it out if you have, you know, a Game Boy that you never use because it's a good game. And if you want, it's an old game, and it's dated. It's definitely dated, because, you know, it's just dated. We'll just leave it at that. But I would definitely recommend it to anyone. So, Legend of Zelda: Link's Awakening was number fifty. Number forty-nine. Xeno Saga Episode One. Uh, let's see if I hope I don't butcher this. Butcher this. Der Wille zur Macht. That's German. That's German for the will to fight. Oh, no, the will to power. The will to power. 
um, came out for the PS2, February 5th, 2003. Now, it's just this game is on my list. Um, I wouldn't put the second game, Gen uh, Sitz von Gut und Bose, Beyond Good and Evil. That's also in German. Uh, I wouldn't put that anywhere close. I didn't think that was game was very good. It was too fast-paced. Um, Xenosaga's storyline was nice and slow. Xenosaga, the first game, is like famous for how much cutscenes it has. It has like hours and hours and hours and hours and hours of cutscenes. You can just sit there for ha- half an hour and just watch a cutscene. And you know, normally I wouldn't like that, but it's it's the storyline is so like epic. You know, I only wish I would have had the commitment to finish the series. The third in the series is also Sprock Zarathustra. I never played that game, um, but I heard it was better than the second, not as good as the first. Which is kind of the way a lot of tri- trilogies pan out, you think about it. First one's good, second one is not quite as good. The third one is better than the second one, but not as good as the original, when you really think about it. So yeah, Xenosaga Episode 1. Really cool. It's in, set in the future. Androids, robots, super huge, awesome uh, weapons. Really cool game. Uh, it's an RPG, by the way. Uh, okay, f- Fable is number 48. Fable um, came out for the Xbox in September 14, 2004. I'm not really sure when it came out for PC. I didn't play it on the PC. Uh, but Fable is also an RPG. It's an adventure RPG. And the cool thing is, with this game, is depending on the choices you make, good or evil, I mean, there's always, like, you know, there's it's almost commonplace these days to have a good or an evil path in a video game, you know, especially in an RPG. Um, but in this game, if you're good you will look good. You'll get a halo, uh, butterflies will kind of flap around you, your eyes will turn blue, you know. But if you're evil, you get like these giant horns growing out of your head, and your eyes turn red, and um, you get these flies buzzing all around you. So apparently, evil makes you stinky. <laughs> but um, tish. Okay, enough about that. But Fable, seriously, it's good stuff. It was... um overly hyped by the by the creator and that's why a lot of people had a problem with it it's really short it's really short I'm not gonna lie um but i would recommend fable to anyone i believe it's backwards compatible for 360 so yeah fable uh 47 is paper mario for the nintendo 64 um that came out february 5th 2001 uh this is one of the first rpgs i think i ever played and it was a mario rpg which isn't very common you know, I think like one of your first RPGs you'd ever play would be like a Final Fantasy game. But this game, honest to goodness, really, really a lot of fun. Um, it's the sequel to Super Mario RPG Legend of the Seven Stars, which will come up later in this list. Um, but Super, uh, but Paper Mario is uh, just a lot of fun. It's a, it's a great example of an RPG in my opinion. The perfect marriage of like the, the goofy kind of Mario. Has a really, it still feels like a Mario game, even though it's nothing like a Mario game. It has Mario characters, and you like Mario music and themes, but like the, the chapter system and and the the uh, turn-based combat, you know. Yeah, it was really like the first time I ever played an RPG and it blew my mind. At least on the N64. And I love Mario, so win, right? Um, and last one for this video is number forty-six. Rayman 2, The Great Escape, also for the N64. It came out October 29th, 1999. It also came out on a bunch of other stuff. It's like came out on PlayStation, PlayStation 2, uh, Dreamcast. Um, I'm fairly certain it came out for DS. It might even be available on um, Virtual Console now for Wii, so you know it's all over the place. It's almost impossible to not play this game. It's a lot of fun. Uh, Durden77 did a Let's Play of it. Which is, and he's like the first Let's Play I ever watched was his. Um, and I'm so glad he did it on that game because I feel like this this game, like so many other games in the in the world, didn't get the hype that it deserved. So, Rayman 2 is a platformer. Um, it's a lot of fun. Platformer. <laughs> I guess that's all I can say about that game. You know, if you for more, check out Durden 77's Let's Play. Um, for those of you who haven't, heck, I'll even, um, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll put it in the description. Uh, this is over here. Over here. I'm trying to think if I put this on. Over there. Okay. Alright, so that's all, all, all for now. Tell me what you think, um, of this. If you think it's cool, good. If you think it's crappy, well, okay. 
Um, but I appreciate your feedback either way. Thanks for tuning in, and I'll try to get that Let's Play back up and running. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.